Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're first going to draw the vector function. It looks like it's only in the xy plane. And then we're supposed to find the divergence and the curl. And maybe we can make some initial estimates of what that might be when we take a look at it. But anyway, let's, uh, let's see here. Um, how do we draw that? Well, let's move along the x-axis which means y is equal to zero, so this will stay zero, and then x will increase in the y direction as I move along the x-axis, which means that initially I'll have a small vector this way, and the vector will get bigger and bigger in the positive y direction as x gets bigger. So that's what happens along the x-axis. Along the y-axis, when x remains zero and y increases, I have a positive x in the x-direction vector like this, so the first will be small, and then it'll be bigger, and then it'll be bigger like this. So in this quadrant right here, notice that if I add those two vectors together, from the origin, I have a small vector this way, a bigger vector, and a bigger vector this way. So that's what the vector field looks like in that particular quadrant. So it's pointing this way, and as I move over to the y-axis, it'll point that way. So notice halfway in between, it'll point in this direction. If I now go in the negative x direction, and I keep y equal to zero, Negative x, that means I'm going to point in the negative y direction, so there'll be a small vector this way, should be parallel to the y vector axis, like this, and like this. So that's what that looks like, and if I move along the negative y direction, so x stays zero, then this will become negative, negative x direction, so I have a vector pointing this way, vector pointing this way, vector pointing this way, which means that halfway in between, my vectors will look like this. So again, notice that the vectors will change from here, to here as I go to the, in that quadrant. All right, hmm, I guess that's what my vector field looks like. And, well, what does it look like over here? Notice if I'm over here, that means my vector field will look this way, bigger this way, and bigger this way. And over here, it'll look like this, and like this, and like this, which means that my vector field will go like this to here, and my vector field will go from here so here, all right, I've defined the vector field in all four quadrants. Now notice that here my vector field rotates this way, but here it rotates in the opposite direction. Here it rotates this way, and here it rotates in the opposite direction. This way, opposite direction. It looks like in every case, if I look at the curl in one direction, it is negated by the other direction. I would suspect that there's a zero curl on that particular vector field. We're going to find out in just a moment. So here we have the general definitions of finding the uh, divergence and finding the curl. Let's find the divergence first. So first we'll take the del operator, multiply times the vector field via the dot product, which is equal to the partial with respect to x of the x component. So the partial with respect to x of the x component, which is y, and then plus the partial with respect to y of the y component, the partial with respect to y of the y component, which is x, plus the partial with respect to z of the z component, which is zero. And it looks like we're going to get a zero divergence. So this is equal to zero plus zero plus zero, which is zero. There is zero divergence. In other words, it doesn't, the vector field doesn't fan out in any way because notice that here it fans out but here it comes in here it comes out there it comes in it all is in equal quantity and magnitude there's an exact mirror image in every quadrant so therefore you can see that it all cancels out we have zero divergence there's no effluence of vector field and no incoming vector field how about the curl all right so if we're going to take the curl we need the matrix we need x y and z unit vectors, the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, and the partial with respect to z. And then here we need the x, y, z components, so that would be y, x, and 0. All right, so this is equal to the x unit vector times, that would be the partial of y with respect, with the partial with respect to y of 0 minus the partial with respect to z of x. And that would be minus the y unit vector times the partial with respect to x of 0 minus the partial with respect to z of y. And then plus the z unit vector times 
We have the parcel of x with respect to x. Ah, there we go. There we have something. The parcel with respect to x of x minus the parcel with respect to y of y. The parcel with respect to y of y. And that makes sense. If the vector field is in the xy plane, we expect the first two components to be 0. And there would be something in the third component if there is a curl. So this is equal to 0 in the x direction plus 0 in the y direction. And then notice that this is going to be uh, plus, we have 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 in the z direction. Notice that it cancels out. We end up with 0 in the z direction. That's the only direction that matters. And so therefore, there's no curl and there's no divergence with this particular vector field in the xy plane. And that is how it's done. So all those uh, fields on the xy plane, right? Yes, xy field because otherwise it's too difficult to come up with the divergence and get a visualization on it. Of course, you can have vector field in any direction, but then it's more difficult to kind of visualize it. Uh, this is a good example for that, so you can visualize it. All right. Okay, what else do we got? 